Hello, welcome back. Today, I want to show you one person who I think is remarkable in their life, a very unusual life, a performer who has spent most of his life playing Jesus and how this has influenced them. My name is Andy, I'm a philosophy lecturer and what we're doing here is we try to understand how happiness works and how we can improve our own lives by using classical philosophy theories of happiness. Welcome and stay with us to the end to get tips on how you can apply these things to your own life. I recently saw an interview with a man called Ted Neely. Perhaps you know him if you are old enough. Perhaps you have seen the musical Jesus Christ. Superstar is a very old musical. It's from the 70s. And it describes the life of Jesus. And so they cast one person as Jesus, who was Jesus in the movie. And this is a man called Ted Neely. He looked in his younger years more like Jesus. He had a little beard and he had a smile and, you know, an interesting look that reminded a little of how we imagine that Jesus might have looked. And he played this role in the movie and later he played this role in performances of the musical, live performances. And this musical was so successful that Ted Neely went on to do this thing for the rest of his life, essentially. So he went on to do it for many, many decades. And he was playing every day on a stage this musical, this role of Jesus. And people still, when I saw this interview, this interview was recorded a few years ago, but people were still going to see it, had nearly played this. And then finally there was the farewell tour and he stopped playing this musical, he retired essentially. And so the whole life of this man has been essentially one role. He was playing Jesus. And the interesting thing is when he talks in the interviews, and I would invite you to watch some of these interviews, I can link one in the description area. When you watch the interviews with Ted Neely, one thing he keeps saying is how much the role changed him, how much it made him into a better person, almost like making him into Jesus, the person as it is portrayed. Of course, he wouldn't say this because this is kind of blasphemy, right? If you are a normal human being, you are not Jesus. But how he took on more and more traits from this role and how his own reactions in his everyday life became more and more the reactions of this role. And I think this is a very interesting comment on what Aristotle says about habits, how we can improve our own character by habitually doing good things. Nobody is born a holy man. You know, we are all as children, we are all selfish. We all do bad things as young people, you know. We all have periods in which we rebel against our parents or we, you know, rebel against society. And it's not always pretty. And, you know, depending on how you are raised or what your environment is, it can be more or less bad. But... Of course, all of us are tempted occasionally in young years, you know, to do something bad or to do something antisocial or even in personal relationships, perhaps to cheat on girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever it may be. So we are all guilty of something or other, right? And this is normal. This is part of human development. But the point is that as we develop further, Aristotle says, we should use the power of habit to make our soul better, our character better. And how do we make it better consciously? By being good, by doing particular things again and again, good things, and then we will become better. So, for example, the more I lie, the more I become into a liar. And this is why, you know, criminals have difficulty getting out of their criminal lives, because of course, you can imprison them, they can come out of prison, but then their character has not changed, has not been trained to be better. 
While if you consciously train your character to be better every time you don't lie consciously, you force yourself to tell the truth, perhaps even if it's against your interests, you're actually improving your character. You're getting it to be a better person. And this, you could say, you know, it's just Aristotle. Perhaps he is wrong. Who knows? Perhaps he has an agenda saying these things. You know, he wanted to write his book, and I don't believe him. But I think that Ted Neely is exactly this example, you know, of a, of a real person who has no agenda. Why would he lie about what happened to him? Um, when he played this role, but in a very simple way, just playing a role, not even, you know, taking it seriously. I mean, the man is not crazy. He's not, he doesn't think that he is actually Jesus. He knows he is Ted Neely. But just pretending every day for years to be Jesus actually changes him and makes him into this person he's impersonating, more and more similar to that person he is impersonating. And so this says something about our own lives. When we want to be something, it really helps to pretend first and to try to be like the person I want to be. And if I do it again and again at some point, I will actually become this person. It's like a saying they have nowadays, young people say, you know, fake it until you make it. Yeah, this is the thing, you know, if you fake it long enough, then you will eventually become this person because, like Aristotle says, the, the um, being, this person, will become a habit. And then suddenly you wake up one day and you are this person. And this is a bad thing. If you are a criminal, obviously it's a bad thing because it makes it more difficult for you to change. But if you use it for good, it's a very good thing because it means that the fight to be good becomes easier and easier. And we know this also, you know, from other things, for example, smoking. I was a very heavy smoker for 10 years. And the more you smoke, you know, the more you are in the habit of smoking and the, the more difficult it is to stop. But when you finally stop smoking in the beginning, it seems terrible because your whole behaviors, everyday behaviors are connected with smoking, with the existence of cigarettes, with breaks around cigarettes, with, you know, taking a cigarette for inspiration and, and all kinds of things. And it becomes very difficult in the beginning. But then the more you do it, the more you live without cigarettes, it becomes easier and easier. And now for me, it is more than, you know, 30 years almost that I've stopped smoking. And of course, nowadays, I, I never think of smoking as something, you know, I would like to do just because all my habits have changed and now my habits are habits without cigarettes. And I think that this is very valuable to think of our own lives. What do you want to be? You can think what you want to be and then perhaps describe this character or pick a character perhaps from a movie who behaves like you want to behave. And then, if we believe Aristotle, we should just fake it. We should just try to pretend that we are this character. We should try to ask ourselves, in this situation in my life, what would this person do? And then do it. Act like this. And in the beginning it might feel artificial, it might feel fake, but one after the other times, the more I do it, it will become easier and easier. Not only easier and easier, it will feel more natural because it will be more and more me who is doing that because what this me is has slowly shifted to become that which I want to become. And these tricks, you know, it's a kind of trick, this trick of, of changing your personality, of course, also applies to other changes perhaps we want to do, like improving our relationship to work. So if you're interested in this, watch this video in which we talk about work and how you can change your personality to be a better person at work and why this would be a good idea and would improve your life and the lives of others. Thank you and see you in the next video.